So now we have a poem written by John Ashbery, uh, published much later, 1981, later than Some Trees, which is very early. And this is more typical of Ashbery. It's confusing. Uh, it's very postmodern in certain ways. We're going to talk about that. It doesn't quite, it, it, it really doesn't say what it wants to say. It starts over. It's difficult, I guess we would say. So let's talk about the pronouns. What, how, how do they work? Um, Trust me, the world is run on a shoestring. They have no time to return the calls in hell. Who's they? Speculate. We don't know, right? There's a couple of different they's that appear. And it could be the same they, and it could be a different they each time. You know, right. We, we have the they have no time to return the calls. Um, we have uh, they will tell you what we've all known for years. Mm -hmm. Um, once they made the great trip to California, you know, there's, there's a couple of different, lots of different days. Let's comp let's take two of those days and compare them. The first one is, trust me, the world is run on a shoestring. They have no time to return the calls in hell and pay dearly for those wasted minutes. Who could the, they there be? I mean, obviously there's a bunch of phone operators in hell, so it's a hellish phone operation <laughs> system. They're not returning your calls. What are you asking them? Why are you calling hell, Max, in a poem called Hard Times? What do you have to say to hell? No. Who in hell can help you? Yeah, we're wondering, you know, what the hell is going on? What the <laughs> hell is going on? But they, there's nothing worse than being in hard times and calling for help to hell and having hell not return your calls. Yeah. It's the ultimate frustration. So they would be presumably those who manage the call system in hell. Okay. Um, before we get to the second day, let's go back to the first line. Trust me, the world is run on a shoestring. What does that mean, the world is run on a shoestring? It doesn't Emily? have enough resources. It's suffering. It's not thriving. When, if we run, let's say our household is run on a shoestring, what do we, what do we mean by that? Times are, times are tough. Times are tough. Hard so times. We really run on a shoestring is an idiom that refers to... It's a shoestring and a prayer. Budget. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's like there's it's, not it's much held going together. on like, here. It's held together with a shoestring and a prayer, meaning it's like it's held together with a shoestring, which is probably not the strongest. In my family, we say band-aids and bailing twine. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Everything is held together. Okay, so the world is run on a shoestring. So what does that mean, largely, Emily? It means that the whole world is just in poor shape. It doesn't have enough. It's, it's falling not just apart. this particular hard times, 1981, which was a mini-recession, the beginning of the Re Ronald Reagan era. Um, it's a general statement that the world is run on a shoestring, which means what? It could fly apart at any second. Yeah, it's not really nearly as organized as you thought it is. When you were a kid, particularly, you thought, oh my goodness, this whole thing is set up. And then you realize the more you know, the less you know. And you, 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 to mix the metaphor, you open the, you look under the hood of the car of the world and you realize the thing is held together by band-aids and bailing twines. So the world is run on a shoestring, trust me says the narrator, says the speaker. There is a word that refers, it's not a really accurate word, but it's a nice, it's a Greekish word. When you use it, people are impressed. To refer to Ashbury's technique of shifting pronouns, of giving you pronouns you don't understand. And the word is polyptoton, P-O-L-Y-P-T-O-T-O-N. It doesn't quite, it's not quite defined that way, but we use it that way. So what is he saying? Is, is Ashbury saying something through his polyptoton? Like just it becomes hard to identify and keep relationships straight if the pronouns. And what could be possibly intentional about that, given that these are hard times um, and that the world is run on a shoestring? That roles often get switched, power dynamics change. Even maybe the trust me at the beginning is meant ironically or Don't sort trust of cynically. Me, yeah. yeah. And specific references and specific, you know, referential language may no longer apply. When the system right. falls apart. Here it's a, the economic system, although I don't think John Ashbery has a particular interest in the failures of the economy. He's not a cri criticizer of capitalism overtly, but when the system in general falls apart, cause and effect are confused. Who's the agent of ill effect? It's not clear. We ourselves may be it. When they don't return your calls in hell, that's really hellish. This is post-modernity of the scary kind. More or less succinctly, they will tell you what we've all known for years. They being, again, Amaris. Um, in this case, maybe poets. I, 
I was thinking that like it seems rather pessimistic or cynical in tone. So maybe he's commenting on the inadequacy of the message to actual work, actual change. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I like what you're saying. I'm not sure about the poets. I think they are the promulgators of this mixed message or this this mode of communication. The ones who, who are the ones who set the proceedings, who set the system. Power structure. More or less succinctly, the power structure, nice. More or less succinctly, they will tell you what we've all known for years. And what is it they, they tell you since, Dave, you were already going in that direction? Just the power structure exists to keep the power structure. Right. Which is a frightening, uh, you know, self-referential answer. The answer is the reason things are this way is that we set them up to be this way. Whatever twists around it, the message is decoration, can never be looked at as something isolated apart. Get it? That's a funny thing for a speaker to say in a poem that makes no sense. Get it? What's the gist of that, Allie, when you see that? Get it? Well, the gist is that, no, we don't necessarily. No, we don't get it. <laughs> we didn't get the message, and we don't get what you mean about the message. And, and this weird and, an and that doesn't conjoin, right? an and that sets up a parataxis or a non sequitur. And he flashed, he, he, this. I don't think it's a non sequitur. I actually, when I read this, I thought that starting with trust me, that's what the he with the mouthful of aluminum teeth, he's been saying this all along. Oh my goodness. The speaker is devilish. Yeah. And he flashed a mouth, well that would work with polyptoton because me turns into a he, and he in your reading. And he flashed a mouthful of aluminum teeth there. What, a, what image is that? Molly, can you describe that image? Is that a friendly thing? No, it's sort of a gnashing of terrible teeth. That shine in the dark. Aluminum teeth. Like in the James Bond movie. With the yeah, Joshua. there's a James yeah. Bond villain type, I see. And he flashed a mouthful of aluminum that. teeth there in the darkness to tell what, Max? To tell however it gets down that it does at last. That this this message that's filtering through all the proceedings, he's he's saying that yeah it, it eventually comes but it's such a he has such a sinister look about him that it, it becomes sort of a it's not it's not hopeful it's 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 dark it's sinister but now that he's set up this sort of second uh, version of yeah. things the second story starts again once as in once upon a time so he's almost starting over sure yeah so the the it then gets even more complicated we don't know if he's referring back to the to this message that's trickling down, or if it's rather this this other version of events, this more uh, sort of depression era gold rush well, story. Well, the individuality, the right? It's seeking your fortune, seeking the American dream is something you think of as something you do as an individual, and then you realize that you're part of an ideological pattern, a pattern that's already set up by the proceedings, and you do what everybody else does. And you only get what everybody else gets. You don't get anything particularly more or less. And then it, that individuality that you saw, in time it gets to stand with the wind. What if it is the notion of being different from all the others? In time it gets to stand with the wind. You can, you can do it. You can rise. But by then it's too late. This poem is about... The American message, it seems to me, the, 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 the import of living the American dream over participating in the American economy, the message is always that it's going to be, occur to you what it means too late to be of any significance. So it's a difficult poem. Why does it have to be so difficult? Because being individual isn't easy. Okay, so it's dealing with a concept that's hard. And when I was in sixth grade, back in the days when they actually taught us individuality is like important, we learned individuality as an American idea, it was presented to me in a very simple way, but it's actually a very complicate, complicated process. Anybody else, why does it have to be so difficult? Ashbury, this is a classic Ashbury poem where people say, oh, you know, you read this in the New Yorker, I don't know if this was published in the New Yorker, you read this in the New Yorker and you say, oh boy, another incomprehensible poem by John Ashbury, why? Well, you know, what, what they have known that they will tell you that they've known for all these years is that the power of this climate is only to conserve itself. And so the climate is, is in itself incomprehensible. 
So then the poem... The incomprehensibility in, of the poem. In order to best express that incomprehensibility, the poem also has to be pretty incomprehensible. Dave, you seem to think that's right. I do. I think maybe it's the message, the, mm -hmm. the secret that we all try to be individual, but we're all doing it at the same time. And that, that's the message that's difficult, like the poem. If the world is run on a shoestring, I'm not sure that the perfectly, I'm going to say something opinionated here. I'm not sure that the, that the perfect, coherent, formalistic Robert Frost poem is the one that I want to convey for me, the shoestringness of the world. I think in some ways Ashbery is one of those poets that, that bespeaks the shoestringness of this and also the belatedness of answers. And so th this poem is really about hard times and it ain't easy. The poem ain't easy any more than hard times are.